Welcome back to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show. Nightmare Castle is shot in black and white. Always the best choice for a ghost story. Even better when you can't afford colour. While writer-director Mario Ciano doesn't have Mario Bava's eye for light or shadow, he nonetheless manages to create a real feeling of decay. Hampton Castle itself is not the crumbling ruin you might expect. It's actually a richly appointed mansion with tapestries and ornate woodwork. It doesn't look like a set on a soundstage. It looks like a real castle, and very likely a haunted one, though not by anybody I know as far as I recall. The cast is better than the movie would have you believe, with Paul Muller chillingly evil in the role of Stephen. Muller was featured in many other horror films over his career, including several for Jess Franco. He was the hanging father in A Virgin Among the Living Dead and Dr. Seward in Count Dracula. More recently, he had a cameo as the leader of the Black Monks in Umberto Lenzi's Hell's Gate. Still, this early role remains one of his most effective. Barbara Steele is Barbara Steele, for better or worse. She is probably better remembered for the inspiration she provided to Italian filmmakers than for her actual talents as an actress. In this, she dubs her own voice for a change, which wasn't much of a challenge since half her lines were the word, No! This wasn't the first dual role for Barbara. Her first starring role was as Asha Karcher in Mario Bava's Black Sunday, and in many of her other films she played ambiguously dualistic characters, if not actually two entirely separate people. In Nightmare Castle, she's divided into the Aerosmith sisters, Brunette Muriel and Blonde Jenny. Hammer Films may have had the budget to afford real twins in Twins of Evil, but they wouldn't be able to act their way out of a wet negligee. Barbara Steele, on the other hand, would win hands down against both of them, with one breast tied behind her back, no doubt. Ow. Also, Barbara's two roles as Muriel and Jenny are a bit less straightforward than the good girl, bad girl dichotomy of her characters in Black Sunday. Muriel isn't actually evil. She may be a super bitch that goes after anything in trousers, yes, both selfish and cruel, but her desire for revenge against such a vile man as Stephen is quite understandable. As for Jenny, she may be the light-haired, therefore good sister, but she's hardly a stereotypical heroine. She's a frail, spiritless creature with a history of mental illness who is hardly a match for the grasping soul of Muriel. Helga Liner's coldly beautiful presence is ideal for Solange. When she speaks of the stolen blood running cold and heavy through her body, it's a chilling moment. Solange's old woman makeup is grotesque, but it's grotesque in an eraserhead sort of way. Whether or not this was an appropriate effect for a film like Nightmare Castle is debatable, but Helga carries it off well. Beneath the unbelievable layers of crust on her face, you can still see Helga's suspicious eyes remain active, darting back and forth. Lawrence Clift, if that is his real name, is quite bland and uninteresting as the nominal hero Dr. Derek Joyce, a role that practically requires him to be bland and uninteresting. Inertia at its finest, and a career to match with this being his only credited screen appearance. The only real disappointment in the cast is Rick Battaglia as David, if only because he fails to be truly menacing when he comes back from the dead. Perhaps it's because his costume has been shredded a little too neatly. It has more of the wardrobe department than the grave about it. Or perhaps it's because his pants are pulled a little too high up over his waist, making him look like a portly middle-aged zombie instead of a lean, hungry one. Best of all is Ennio Morricone's monumental fugue in E-flat minor for organ, which dominates the score. It takes a great deal of skill for a composer to write a successful fugue, and Ennio Morricone does an admirable job. The script, on the other hand, is a total write-off. Now, I'm not complaining about the plot, although I very easily could. No, it's the English language dialogue that pushes me right over the edge. There are moments, particularly when Stephen is pontificating, when you just want to throw up your hands and tell them all to shut up. As a final note, keep an eye out for my cameo during the finale. They flew me all the way to Italy for a split-second cutaway of me in drag. It wasn't worth it in the end. They offered me all the ravioli I could eat, and that just goes straight through me. Uh, let's get back to the other Barbara Steele in Nightmare Castle, yes? 